Welcome to Lincoln Wear Live. We're here every Sunday morning from 10 until 11. So uh, go ahead, pick up the phone, call your friends, tell them Lincoln Wear Live is on the air. We got a great show lined up for you today. The first part of the show, we're going to talk to some of my fellow Marines, Toys for Tots. It's Toys for Tots season coming up, and we'll talk to them about how you can donate uh, Toys for Tots, and maybe if you are in an organization, how you can get toys donated to your organization from the Marine Corps. So stick around for that. Then on the second half of the show, we've got Andrea Haysbert. She used to live in Claremont County, the same place Brenda Slaby used to live. Well, I think Brenda Slaby lives there now. Anyway, remember her? She left her kid in the car for eight hours. The baby died, and she didn't have to go to jail or anything like that. Well, Andrea had hired a babysitter to keep her kids overnight. The babysitter left the kids alone before she could get back home, and guess, guess who got arrested? Not the babysitter, but Andrea. And she even lost her kids in the process. The same prosecutor, Don White. What's up with that? Was racism involved? I don't know. We'll let you decide when you hear her story coming up on the second part of the show. So please don't go away. Stick around. First of all, we've got Sergeant Joshua Sherman and Sergeant D.J. Snyder with us from the U.S. Marine Corps. And by the way, happy belated birthday. It was a Marine Corps birthday yesterday. Yes, it was, Lincoln. All right. Well, uh, simplify, my friends. Tell us about the Toys for Tots campaign. Well, the Toys for Tots was started back in 1947 by Major Bill Hendricks in L.A., California. His wife made a Raggedy Ann doll, gave it to Bill and said, Bill, you need to go out and find an organization to give this to a needy child. Mm -hmm. Well, he came back hours later telling his wife there is no organization to donate this Raggedy Ann doll to. Well, she said, Bill, you're going to start one. So that first year, Toys for Tots delivered 5,000 mm -hmm. toys in the L.A. area. And here in Cincinnati last year, we delivered 86,305 toys to 28,000 kids here in the greater Cincinnati and northern Kentucky area. Wow, wow. Now, uh, I know you do, uh, you have barrels set up around the city. I know sometimes during the Bengals game, you, uh, you have barrels set up down there. How, first of all, how can a person donate funds or toys to the toys, toys for Tots? What type of toys are you looking for? Do they have to be packaged? Uh, how does that have to take place? The toys that are donated are um, new unwrapped toys. Uh, they can be donated either on the website, toybarrel.org, which is our local website, or toysfortots.org, which is the national website. You can do donate monetary funds there. Okay. Our local website, if you donate to that website, um, it actually stays in our area. The toys get bought here. The toys get given back to the kids in the community okay. in and, this area. And that's what we would like. So uh, what's the local website address so you can donate funds? So Toy the money is spent right here. Toybarrel.org. Okay, and they can log on there and make a donation yes, uh, to toybarrel.org, and the money is spent right here in Cincinnati and stays here. But on the national scene, you do have a national website. Now, how do you distribute all the toys you get in, and when you go out and buy toys with the funds you receive, how do you distribute those toys? How does an organization get in on uh, some of the, the toy giving? Well, organization registration is going at the Navy and Marine Corps Reserve Center on Gilbert Avenue. And the organizations can come down from November 12th through the 16th from 8 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon to sign up their organization to receive toys from Toys for Tots. And also families can register at the Salvation Army from the November 12th through the 16th. All the Salvation Army course sites throughout the Cincinnati and northern Kentucky area will be taking registration this week also. Okay, so and then how do you decide which organizations get what or how do you, you know, weed them out? And how do you distribute those toys to those organizations? How do, is that a process you go through or what? We ask that organizations that come to apply have an updated IRS nonprofit status form. Mm -hmm. And also they pre-screen their families the same way if, as if the family would come to register with okay. Toys for Tots. Okay, all right. So. And then uh, what's the deadline on them registering for this? Actually, sir, the main registration is November 12th through 16th. Okay but we never turn away a family. Okay. If something happens and they can't make it to the dates provided, we will always take registrations for the families afterwards down at our unit. Uh, now, is there a phone number they can call? Or, or uh, what if they can't get to one of the, they've got a bunch of toys to donate, and they can't get to one of the locations. Will you guys come out and pick them up? Yes, we will. Okay. If they just give us a call at 513-221-2370, 
and just let us know that they want us to come pick up the toys. We can come pick up the toys. All right, uh, 513-381-3838, that's the number here. If you've got questions for our Marines, and uh, we'll take a quick break and come back and see if you want to talk to the Marines here. Semper Fi. Maybe we got some other Marines out there watching this morning. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back. Lincoln, we're live on a Sunday morning, 10 to 11. We're here every Sunday. We'll take a quick break and come right back. And we're back live, Lincoln, where live is the program. And we're talking to a couple of U.S. Marines here, Sergeant Joshua Sherman and Sergeant D.J. Snyder. And uh, they're here with the Marines Toys for Tots campaign. It's underway right now, so uh, get those toys together and uh, donate them to the U.S. Marines. Or they take cash donations so that they can go out and buy toys. I don't know if you can answer this question, but with all the toy recalls and all this lead paint and all these toys, what precautions are the Marines taking? Well, actually, Lincoln, we went through our toys and took all the recalled toys okay. out of the warehouse that we have because we care about the safety of the, yeah, the kids yeah, in Cincinnati. Yeah, okay. And we took those and we've handled that okay. the way they were supposed to be handled. That's so. Just like Marines, always thinking ahead. Yes, you know, sir. Marines are always thinking ahead. Let's go to the telephones, 513-381-3838. If you've got a question for our Marines here, let's go to Robert. Robert, good morning. You're on Lincoln Wear Live. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. Robert, good morning. Uh, first of all, Robert, uh, you have to turn your TV down, okay? <laughs> Take that remote and hit the volume button or down, and then we can make some progress here. All right, you ready? Yeah. Uh, I got a question. What would you take the toys to if you donate toys? You can call our, uh, you can call our phone number. It's 513-221-2370 when you want to donate toys, and uh, we can give you locations of uh, all the donation drop-off boxes. You can also go to uh, toysfortots.org and look up the Cincinnati uh, organization, the uh, campaign for us. And that will also give you uh, all the locations in uh, the whole Cincinnati area. There's over 200 locations you can drop off toys to. And make sure they're <laughs> new wrapped toys. Unwrapped. And they can bag us, can't be choice in Mr. Ware. Well, well, well they, they have to be new wrapped toys. We don't want any discarded toys that your kids are tired of playing with. See, I knew I should ask you that question. You just sounded like you were going to just <laughs> grab up a bunch of toys and take them down there that you wanted to get rid of. That's not what they're looking for. Oh, really? So what exactly are they looking for? New. I mean, is it a certain limit I should go out and spend? Well, there's no limit. You can spend as much as you want, but they have to be wrapped toys. Well, New wrapped toys in the box. Is there a way you can write this off on your taxes? Yes. Yes. Oh, you can? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay? Okay. So Thank basically, you. Mr. Way, well, you said it's got to be... They have to be new. They can't because I got a garage full of toys. Let's see, that's what I figured. <laughs> no, we don't want all those broken toys in your garage. Uh, new toy. No, no kid wants to wake up on Christmas morning and play with a broke toy from your garage. Thanks for your call. <laughs> okay. <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Let's go to uh, Corel. Corel, how you doing? Corel. Yes, I'm here, Mr. Ware. How you doing? Okay. Uh, I just have a real simple question. Um, how can I uh, sign up for Toys for Tots? I can't get to you all or nothing. Okay, you mean to receive toys? Yeah. Okay, you probably have to. You don't give individuals toys. They have to be with an organization. I don't know. Well, actually, family. we take family registration okay. at all the Salvation Army Corps sites throughout Cincinnati and northern Kentucky. If you actually call the Salvation Army's number, which is 513-762-5600. They will actually direct you to your nearest Salvation Army Corps site, which family registration will be taking part November 12th through the 16th. You see that number up on the screen now? Write that number down. Okay. And then give them a call. 5600? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks for your call. All right, 513-381-3838. Uh, let's go back to the telephones. We're talking to the U.S. Marines this morning. 
And we're talking about the uh, toys for tots. Let's go to Lenora. Lenora, good morning. How are you? Hi. Good morning, Mr. Ware. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I would like to say um, I'm from uh, Cumminsville, and I work at um, Kroger's mm -hmm. on Ferguson. And I want to tell all the Kroger employees, all of them, to donate to this wonderful organization. This is so nice. I want everybody that works at Kroger's, all the employees, all the managers, everybody, to, to uh, donate toys for tots to these, this wonderful organization. Yes. And these are some wonderful men, and I just want to say thank you so much for being there. Well, of course they're wonderful. They're Marines. Give I know, right. and God bless <laughs> them, and happy belated birthday to the one that has the birthday. Well, no, the whole Marine Corps. It was the Marine Corps birthday. Oh, it was? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, happy belated birthday <laughs> okay. to them. All right. And happy <laughs> Veterans Day today. Too. Yes, yes. How about and, that? and thank you, Mr. Ware, for having such a wonderful show. And God bless you all, okay? Well, thank, thank you, you for calling. And thank you. All right. Bye. There we go. Uh, I mean, the Marine Corps always out there in the community when they're not out fighting a war. Yes. You guys been to Iraq? Yes, we have, certainly. Okay. We've been okay. to Iraq and Afghanistan. So. Okay. All right. Let's go to Leanne. Leanne, good morning. You're on Lincoln We're Live. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the Toys for Tots program, the Adopt a Family uh, program. Yeah. I have a social worker. I was told that a social worker had to refer you to this to this program, and I do have a social worker, but she is trying to find out how to go about that for yeah, for my daughter. Okay. Uh, I don't think you have to have a social worker to sign you up, but. Well, actually, ma'am, the Adopt-A-Family is actually part of the Salvation Army. They do Adopt-A-Family. But you can also call the same number that we're listing for the Salvation Army, the 513-762-5600, and they can actually give you all the information for Adopt-A-Family. Um, we did do that, but it was a recording. <laughs> you have to call. Ma'am, if you can call during business hours, um, 8 o'clock in the morning till 3 or 4 in the afternoon, that number should be answered by a secretary. And, uh, but the difference is Adopt-A-Family is Salvation Army only. Toys for Tots is uh, it's a campaign that the Marine Corps uses the Salvation Army to help us out uh, as far as registration and distributing the toys. So they're actually two separate programs. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's All right, thanks for your call. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> All right, 513-381-3838. We're talking about the Toys for Tots program with the U.S. Marine Corps. We'll take a quick break and we'll come right back. Lincoln, we're live here on It's 38. Don't forget, if you want to watch a copy of this show, you can uh, download it. Uh, uh, probably be up online Tuesday, wbqc.com, and you'll be able to see this show, the whole show. We'll take a break and come right back. We're back live. Lincoln Wear Live is the program, and we've got the U.S. Marines in the studio talking about the Toys for Tots program. Before we get back to the phone, when will you be down at Paul Brown Stadium with the barrels down there to collect? Uh, and by the way, it's uh, new unwrapped toys, not new wrapped toys. When I, say, when I was saying wrapped, I meant in the box that they came in. That's what you want them. But you don't want Christmas paper over Correct. the... No. Yeah, that's what we're talking Correct. about. New unwrapped toys, not with Christmas paper on them. Okay, December. when will you be at Paul Brown State? December 9th will be our Toys for Tots Bengals game. We'll have Marines outside of all the entrances. There'll be toy, our toy boxes there, all the uh, families, monetary donations, cash, check, uh, toys, they're all accepted. Uh, we'll have the Marines out there shaking hands and uh, visiting with people. Well, uh, all the faithful Bengal fans are coming Yeah, who in. do they play on December 9th? Do you know? I believe it's the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, boy. It's okay. the St. Louis Rams. Okay, so. all right. So, uh, so uh, hopefully they'll have a winning streak <laughs> going and we'll have a set. Well, that's a, the whole season of the sellout. But, uh, yeah, you want people to come there happy yes. with toys. So, uh, <laughs> December 9th, Paul Brown Stadium. Get those toys ready. Come down and meet the U.S. Marine Corps. Let's go to Carlo. Carlo, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Yes, I was wondering, what is the qualifications to sign up for Toys for Tots? Okay, as a, just an individual family? Yes. Okay. Yes. The qualifications for the, the families for registration for Toys for Tots is uh, to meet the, the poverty guidelines the government puts out. 
Uh, all you have to bring is your ID, a proof of low income or government assistance, and also proof of the children, a birth certificate or a medical card showing the date of birth. Okay. Okay, um, and to that man that was on TV about his old toys, he can donate them to a uh, daycare center. Okay, I think there was a lady. Yeah, that's, you're right. Uh, maybe uh, they could donate to a, a daycare center. Some of those, uh, she said she had a garage full of toys. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for your call. All right. All right, uh, let's go to LaTanya. LaTanya, good morning. You're on Lincoln. We're live. How are you? I'm doing fine. Good morning. I'm calling to ask, um, what is the age range, if any, for children who can receive toys for toy, uh, from Toys for Tots? And uh, she pretty much answered, uh, he answered the first question for me. And that's the wrong spelling of my name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, he gave me We got to get a spell check on it. <laughs> I don't think spell check is set up for Latanya. Yeah, L A capital O N Y A. Latanya. Okay. All right, next time you call in, tell them how you spell it. Hey, they just put it up there. <laughs> okay. To answer Bye, question, Okay, he's going to answer your question. Just hang up and listen. To answer your question, um, Toys for Tots in the Cincinnati area, we donate or we accept toys and we donate toys back to uh, families zero up to 13 years of age. So that's our age range. We break it okay. down into, into groups okay. and uh, male and female, but we okay. do all the way up to 13 years of age. Okay. Now, over the years, uh, do, do they keep a record of, how, uh, you know, how many toys you guys collect? Uh, Every year, do they know how many tons or anything like that? Do they, you know, they, people like to break down stats. Well, over the years, we've collected 15 tons of toys for kids. Do they <laughs> keep a record like that? The actual, the Toys for Tots um, Foundation, since it started, has collected 19 million toys. 19 million yes. tons. I mean, toys. Toys, yes. Now, are White Castle's involved in this also. Yes, they are. What, what about that? Um, White Castle, the way they, they're going to work it this year is, at their register, when you're purchasing uh, items from them, if you donate a dollar to Toys for Tots, they're going to give you a coupon back. It's going to get you two free hamburgers. So White Castles all around the area, I believe there's like 13 to 14 different White Castles, they're mm -hmm. going to be accepting this, these donations. Okay. So uh, the, all the dollar, the whole dollar goes directly back to Toys for Tots. None of it anybody keeps except us. When we get it, we'll take that money and uh, distribute it back out to the children via toys. All right. Well, that sounds great. And once again, give the phone number where people can call to donate toys or to uh, uh, register, register to receive toys. Let's do that one more time before we go. The phone number is going to be 513-221-2370, preferably extension 302. All righty. And uh, you'll be down at Paul Brown Stadium December 9th, so you can bring your toys there if you're going to attend the Bengals game for that. All right, Sergeant Joshua Sherman and Sergeant DJ Schneider, it's always good to see fellow Marines here. You guys are spit shine. You, if I had to in, go through an inspection, I would say you guys would pass. You, <laughs> you, you got everything in order. You got your uh, service medals there and uh, pretty good on the range also. So uh, you guys are all right. You passed the inspection. Thank you. All right. Uh, coming up on the second half of the show, Andrea Haysbert. Now, how do you end up with a felony on your record, in jail, losing your kids because your babysitter that you hired just got up and left the kids there at home alone? And then you get arrested, you get a felony, you lose your kids, and all hell breaks loose in your life. How does that happen? Anything can happen in Claremont County, let me tell you. We'll take a break and we'll come back and let you hear Andrea's story right here on Lincoln Wear Live. Don't go any place. Stick around. You need to hear this story. Thank you, Marines. We'll take a break and we'll come right back. And welcome back to Lincoln Wear Live. Uh, of course, we're here 10 to 11 Sunday mornings. Spread the word. Of course, rebroadcast of this show tonight at 8 o'clock on Channel 25. Uh, in the studio with me, Andrea Haysbert. And uh, welcome to the show, Andrea. Thank you. Now, tell us your story. You, you lived out in Claremont County. Uh, you lived in an apartment complex, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so you hired a babysitter. You were going out with some friends. Pick up the story from there. Well, we went bowling. Um, she knew that I was going to be out all night, you know. And when I returned home in the morning, it was around 8 in the morning, the sheriff were there 
just basically waiting for me. Uh, there was only like three black families in the complex, so they knew exactly who I was. And my daughter at the time was five, and she had went next door because no one was there with her, and she told the neighbors. And uh, I was arrested on the spot. They slammed me on the back of the car because, you know, when I get nervous, I'll pace. Uh -huh. So they didn't want you moving around. They just right. grabbed you and... Slammed me on the back of the car, and... Um, they called the children's services out there, and they asked me uh, if I had anyone who can get the children at the time. Okay, so the babysitter just up and left. Right. And okay. I never got a chance to ask her why, where she went, what was going on. I'm not allowed to go around her because I'll get arrested. Um, uh, they asked me if I had anybody that could get my children. I told them yes. Uh, my neighbor had been, happened to be driving past at the time. Um, She's been involved with my family for several years. Uh, you know, she knows me well. Mm -hmm. And um, I told them she could get my kids until my mom gets off of work. Well, they just let her drive past, put my children immediately into foster care. Um, I had supervised visits once a week, every Wednesday for two hours. I, got, I was allowed to see my children. Never talked to them on the phone just the supervised visits. And some of the times they didn't even make the visit. So I would go all the way out to Claremont County for nothing sometimes. Now, uh, so they, they took your, so you had to go to court. What were the charges? Uh, felony child endangerment. And they persuaded you to plead guilty. Right. I was going to take it to trial, um, but they kept telling me they were going to put my daughter on the stand and I just couldn't accept that. I, you know, I don't know what type of questions they would ask her, how she would feel. They could possibly trick her into saying anything, and I could have been sent to prison. Because I would leave them when I took my garbage outside or when I went to check the mail, you know. So. And they would have asked, has your mother ever left you in the house alone? Right. And she'd think, oh, my mother goes out to the, take the garbage out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, I can understand that. Right. Uh, <clears throat> but I can't understand your attorney just, you know, he didn't even try to cut a deal or anything. Nothing. Nothing. So in the end, I just went on ahead and took the felony. But I did state in the courtroom, I'm only taking this because I don't want you all to hurt my daughter. Mm -hmm. And you know that I have to leave the girls nameless, but they know who really left my children. And so you were found guilty. Uh, you got a record, a felony on your record. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you also had to go through some type of classes and yeah, anger before you management. could get your kids back. Yeah, I had to take anger management, a drug and alcohol assessment because they found beer in my refrigerator. Um, I had to take a homemaker's class. Um, that was about it. And and you say you had to you had to go take a alcohol type. What was it? A drug and alcohol drug and assessment. Alcohol. And because yeah. they found beer, beer in, in your refrigerator. refrigerator. Right. I was 25, so it was legal. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So. Uh, you had this on your record, and then they gave you five years probation. Right. What and was I part of the pay probation? A fine. Um, now I just have to pay a fine and show my face, basically. Uh, they no longer drug test me. Um, it, it's, it's very simple now. I have a very nice PO. So. All of this because your babysitter right. left the kids there. She's the one who endangered the children, exactly. not you. But uh, this is in Claremont County. Don White mm -hmm. was the prosecutor at that time, the same one that we know lets women go free when they leave their kids in the car for eight hours and the right. kid dies. So uh, you've got a new attorney now, Art Harmon. Mm -hmm. Harmon is your new attorney. What does he say about all this? It's unfair, basically. He's going to find a way to try to sue for discrimination because it really is unfair. I lost my kids for two years. Um, I lost everything, my home, my car, my job. My I guess kids. it's hard for you to even get a job now with your felony. Right. I had to work at McDonald's. I worked there for two years. Um, and I worked at a cleaning service, JL Cleaning Service. I still work for him now. I'm just on an on-call basis. I now work at a call center, and we represent AT&T. But it's still low paying. You mm -hmm. know, I can't get a job that pays enough to take care of my children the way they need to be taken care of. All right, let's go to the telephones, 513-381-3838. If you've got a question, uh, we'll let you uh, talk to Andrea. Uh, let's go to Christopher. Christopher, how are you? I'm good, Mr. Way. How you doing? Pretty good. What's up? I, got, uh, I want to ask her a question or two. Go ahead. Uh, first, I wanted to find out, um, 
Did she know anything about the babysitter? Did she do any background check on the babysitter? Yes. Where did the babysitter come from? Okay. Yes, I did. Hang up and listen to the answer. Thanks for your call. Um, she was 18. Uh, she had babysat a lot of families within that complex. That's why I did hire her. She appeared to be very responsible. I met her father. I knew where she lived. I had her phone number, everything. So, you know, I did my homework. It's just unfortunate what she did to me. All right, let's go to uh, Mary. Mary, good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. You look handsome. I like that outfit you got on. <laughs> Mary, I can always count on a... When I'm feeling low, I can always count on you to bring me up. Yeah, it shows in your face that you're tired, but you look good. It does. So I didn't know that. <laughs> I want to say to the ladies that... Uh, you know, it's, we're supposed to know who we leave our kids with. Mm -hmm. You don't just leave your children. Well, she didn't, just didn't leave her children. She said she, this girl babysat for a lot of the families in the area, in the yeah, complex. Yeah, a lot of people leave them, but they don't leave them. The people are not good. They're not responsible. A lot of young folks are not responsible. Well, well I mean, the girl was 18. Well, uh, she's, she I mean, responsible. Some of them 20. Well, well, so what yeah. do you do? Some people 30 are not responsible. So what do you do? Your father, if anything happens, you have to make sure that they're responsible. So y'all take care. Have a good day. Thanks for your call. Now, well, was here's, this a first here's the thing. She watched my children when I went to work, when okay. I ran errands. This wasn't a first time yeah. deal. This was like maybe the 50th time. She's watched yeah. my children. And you have to think, I'm out there in Claremont County. I'm by myself. I am black out there in Claremont County. And she was my a white resources, babysitter. Right. My resources were limited. I had to go accordingly off my income. You know, um, at the time I had three children. I have four now. I don't receive child support or anything like that. So I basically had to do what I had to do. But I did try to make sure I put my kids with someone who is responsible and who will take care of them, who will feed them, who will keep them clean while I'm gone, who will play with them and show them attention. I mean, I've spent time with the girl. I've bought her clothes. You know, I paid her all the time. So it was just unfortunate what happened. I can't say that I was really being irresponsible in picking her because I did what you would do when you find a school for your children, what you would do if you find a daycare center for your children. You know, I did everything right. It's just unfortunate what happened to me. I don't know if she snuck out and meant to come back and got caught up and couldn't make it back. I mean, I mean people do things for whatever reason they do the things for, but I don't feel like I did anything that was improper. I think I took all the proper and necessary steps that I needed to take to hire this lady. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so uh, I guess you did. Now, uh, this story was in the Cincinnati Herald. I read the entire story. In the story, it did mention that you had a previous uh, 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 charge of, of child and child and yes. What in explain Hamilton that. County. My daughter at the time, I had two children. She was six months old. I was 21. It was cold outside, and uh, she was very sick. She finally went to sleep, and I went across the street to get her some medicine from the store. They didn't have it at that store. I went down the street to get it from another store, returned home. My neighbor had called the police on me for leaving her. That I did do, that was my fault. I've never done anything like that again, but like I said, I was young at, at the time, and it was just a bad decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just thinking about she went to sleep finally, so I left her there and went to get the medicine. But they closed the case in 30 days. They didn't find me to be negligent or anything like that. So. All right, let's go to Corral. Corral, how are you? All right, Mr. Ware. What's your uh, question? Um, it's just funny. I'm glad Andrea's on, the, on your show because I just called you about the Army guys, the military. But I have the same problem. My little daughter, my sister stays in Milford Commons. And she's been here over a year, and my, she watches my daughter all the time. And her 10-year-old goes out to go to school in the morning. Now, my sister, she's young, but she's got lupus cancer. And she, she takes a lot of medicine, but she locks the door, her daughter do, behind her. My daughter's three, and she pushes a chair over there, opens up the door, and goes out. Mm -hmm. And a neighbor knew that that was my sister's something to do with it because it's only a few black families in this complex and so they call the cops right and the rent office had the daughter and my sister had woke some told her to wake up and turn around because my daughter wasn't beside her she went out immediately looking for her. she ended up going to the rent office and they had her 
Um, the police officer told her that, okay, he cited her, but he, she'd go to court and it should be thrown out. It was just a little girl being smart, knowing how to open up a door. Well, when she went to the courts, Andrea, the same thing happened to her. She felt that she was obligated or had to plead out to these charges yeah. of child endangerment. And now she's got to start classes. Now she got to do parenting classes. Yeah, I had to do she's that She's a too. single mother. Her daughter's 10 years old. And, and this is about my daughter. And, and she had no justice. The, 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 the attorney that they gave her did not help her whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Not one, one second of it helped her. And she feels obligated now. She got to pay this big fine, which I'm going to help her pay. But the point is, it is something wrong in this county as mm -hmm. far as child care. Yeah, when a child is. care worker came out two days later saying, well, look, we're going to recommend that the case be closed because it's not, it was nothing yeah. happened. I'm just happy that you. Oh, uh, now they're going to recommend that it be closed because, but in the meantime, she's in court, she's right. got these charges and, and the whole bit. No, they recommended that before. They came out two days really? after, the, after it happened. And they, they looked at her, they talked with her. She has nothing on her record. But she still had to end up in court. She went to court, and the judge, she said she felt the judge was Judge Brockman, or Judge Brock, and she feel like he was had so much pressure on her in that court mm -hmm. that she didn't have a chance. Yeah. 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 And, and he, the way he was talking was the way he was going to lock her up immediately. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So she couldn't, she didn't feel like she had a fair shot. It was the first court appearance, and she just played out because the way he was talking. It right. was like... Two for one was there, the kids services, but they he, wasn't speaking. He wasn't hearing any. They didn't speak no. up, and he wasn't hearing any of it. Okay, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Yeah, and that's uh, I guess that's you know a bad that's situation to be in. Mm -hmm. It's like they they overreact on some cases, and then on other cases they don't act quick and fast right. enough or harsh enough. Because I wonder where's the justice at for that baby that died? Where's yeah. the justice? Yeah. I mean, I am a mother of four children. I will never harm my children and kill them. Mm -mm. I don't understand that. Let's go to Eric. Uh, I mean, Eric. I'm sorry. Eric, how are you? I'm doing well, Lincoln. How are you doing? Pretty good. What's on your mind? Uh, I would like to say um, I'm really proud of Andrea for stepping up and saying, speaking out about her case because uh, here in Hamlin County and all around Ohio, there seems to be an uprise in um, duality as far as justice is concerned, as far as black and white. Um, also, I wanted to say something about... Um, my daughter, she was potentially put into a situation like that where she was accosted by uh, a police department, uh, slammed to the ground, dragged out of a car. She's pregnant. Her boyfriend was telling them how long that she was pregnant. They still proceeded to do everything they could. They, they eventually um, accused her of um, resisting arrest and also assault on a police officer. Mm -hmm. However, when it came down to the court system, the police officers dropped the charges of assault on a police officer, which was the felony, and kept uh, um, the other two charges, resisting arrest and with something else. However, uh, she was put on home incarceration. This is a this young woman who has a full-time job, who was going to college and has has had has two other children. Okay, they they totally disrupted her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, totally that's disrupted her life, and it just shows that there's a rise in there may be a, 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 a lull in the arresting of young black men, but there's a rise in the arresting and, and the um, brutal arresting and mistreatment of young black women. So right. thank you, Andrea, for coming on the, show, you. On the Lincoln Wear Show, and thank you, Lincoln, for allowing her to come on your show and present her case to show that these things are really, yeah. really happening in Hamilton County, Claremont County, wherever it is in Ohio. All right, thanks for your call. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, 513-381-3838. Uh, Andrea Haysbert is with us. Now, what is your lawyer, uh, what is Art Harmon trying to accomplish? Uh, he wants to get your felony charge thrown out right. or what? Right, push for a pardon. He wants the media to really get involved. You know, it needs to be heard. And um, I, I want to get paid. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. They ruined my life, literally. Mm. And... I'm still trying to get back the things that I had, and it's hard to get those back. You know, it just seems like as you get older, it's harder to do things. And 
And I'm still trying to get everything back that I had, and I still now, don't have it. During the two years you didn't have your children, uh, were you able to visit them? And Yes. Um, what ended up happening, see, they took them in October, January the 10th of 05, my mom got custody of my kids. Okay, okay. And that was such a blessing. I saw my kids every weekend faithfully. I never missed a weekend. I paid my child support on time every week. Um, and it was... That's unbelievable. It was better. You never received child support. Right, but I had to <laughs> but pay But you it. had to pay it. <laughs> this, this, this world is upside down. Let's take yeah. a quick break, and we'll come right back. Lincoln, we live. She ends up having to pay child support, but she never received it before she got in trouble. Unbelievable. Let's take a break. We'll come right back. Lincoln, we live. Here's the program. And we are back live. Lincoln, where live is the program. We've got Andrea Haysbert with us and uh, talking about her story. Now, how long were your kids in foster care before they ended up with your mother? It was three months. Three months? Five days, to be exact. And see, they should have put them with your mother from the beginning. Immediately. I, yeah. So how, how did they act? Uh, how did they handle foster care? Um, well, they tell me stories now. Uh, they were touched sexually um, by the other children in the home. They were abused a little by the other children in the home. Just kids really picking on them. And that was ne nothing that they ever had to deal with. You know, I tried to shield them from anything mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. um, well, how did they act once they got back to your mother? I mean, were they different? A little. Um, just nervous, pretty much. You can just tell that they had been through something. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know them, you just know it was something. You just didn't know what it was. And um, they're older now, so they tell me more things now, but they're still sensitive. Um, if I just, even now, if I just go and take the trash out, they get scared. They don't think I'm coming back or they think that something's going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. and they're just, they're very sensitive. They do get picked on at the school that they go to. And... They've never had to deal with that. I moved to Batavia for that reason, because they have a great school system. Cincinnati Public Schools, to me, is not up to par. Mm -hmm. But I hate, I'm not prejudiced, but white people give their children better educations, even publicly. That's why I moved to Batavia. Okay. Right. I don't want my kids to end up like me, uneducated. I want them to be educated, you know. Now, where do you live now? I live in Wanted Hills okay. now. All right. yeah. Okay, let's uh, go back to the telephone. Mecca, Mecca, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing, Mr. Lincoln? Pretty good. I want to say, sister, I am so proud of you that you stood up. And these people that's talking about, oh, you shouldn't have left your children, they act like they've never had children before. Exactly. You know, um, it's not easy trying to raise your children, provide for your children, make sure they have the proper education, right. you know, and you want better for your children. But it seems like every move we make, we can't really trust the system. Right. We can't, we need them to back us sometimes, you know, but right when we need them, you know, we need those parenting classes and mm -hmm. those mommy me classes and things like that. And we, as black people, we want those things, but at the same time, we don't have that education. So we're out there working at Burger King or anywhere we can just in order to support our family. So if we go to the store because my baby got the flu and she finally rested and I need to go get her her asthma medicine or whatever because I have a child with a disability too. And I know somebody was watching you just waiting on that. You yeah, know what I mean? Sounds, it the, almost sounds like a setup, you know? Uh, exactly. <laughs> it and almost it, sounds like that, but I just can't. And she can't get close enough to the babysitter. They won't let her ha have any contact to, to the right. babysitter just to ask, why did you leave my kids by themselves? We why already know why she left her children. Why? Because she's stupid. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, Mecca. Thank and you don't yourself. care about us. That's thank one thing. You. Okay, thanks for your call. Okay, I'm sorry. Good Bye. <laughs> I hear you. All right, let's go to Ernestine. Ernestine, good morning. You're on Lincoln. We're live. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. I just had a couple of questions. Um, did they investigate the babysitter, or did they um, ask any witnesses about um, whether or not the babysitter was there? Yes, I had a total of eight witnesses, so they knew that I had a babysitter. They did question the babysitter, and from what I read, she stated that she couldn't watch them. But if you couldn't watch them, why would you stay there when I left? 
Wow. So it's just, it's amazing. Okay, well, thank you. That's thank you. I want to know. Thanks for your call. Let's go to Donnie. Donnie, good morning. Good morning. How are you folks? Pretty good. Good. Uh, Lincoln, the lady that just called before, she somewhat asked my question. I have, But one other question I did want to yeah. know was what race was the babysitter? She was white. She was white. She was white. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, I, and like I said, the other lady did ask the question, but I had wanted to know if the babysitter was ever questioned. Yeah, she was questioned. That was it. She okay. was never arrested. Well, or... thank you so much, and I do hope that your children get back to you safely, and I hope your life is better. Thank well, you. Well, she got them back, but uh, they had to go through hell and high water to get them back. Right, but I did get my children back February the 2nd of this year. Um, I had worked two jobs for two years straight. I had to pay child support every week. I never missed a child support payment. Um, I got my children every weekend. I never missed a visit unless, like, something happened. I did give birth to another child, so I missed a visit because of that. Mm -hmm. I missed the child support and payment because I was on bed rest. But other than that, I did everything that I needed to do to get my children back. And I got my children back. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what about the, the father of the children? Have you ever tried to, you know, go after them for child They're support? They're on child support, but they don't pay. They're in and out of jail. You know, I made bad decisions with the guys I was with. And um, unfortunately, my children suffer because of that. But I take care of my kids to the best of my ability, though. All right, Kina. Kina, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. What's your question? Um, actually, I don't have a question. Um, I want to say that I'm proud of my um, younger cousin, Andrea. Um, I actually went through some things, too, down in Kenton County, and it, it put me through a lot. I lost my children also. And, um, okay, there's a pause in there. Okay, I'm actually watching. Yeah, yeah, turn, you got to turn your TV down. Okay. So, um, what I, what happened was they were, I mean, straight immediately taken from me. I, I did not do anything wrong. I didn't have a felony or anything. I was a half an hour late picking my kids up from school. The school called 241 kids on me. Um, they had prior been... They had been called before by, you know, people that didn't like me. And um, there was another school over there that had called them on me. And I didn't understand why they were calling. Yeah. I was just a half an hour late. Um, my, at the, the first time when the school had called, I happened to um, be coming in late from work. I was driving caught up in traffic. The girl next door would normally watch them. And... Sometimes, you know, she would keep an eye on them because they went to the same school. And, you know, if I was coming in a little bit late, they would uh, turn around and go over there just mm. until I got there, you know. Yeah. So I left her a message telling her, can you please uh, just keep an eye on them. I'll be there. I'm, I'm just a few minutes, you know, behind. Mm. And she never, she didn't answer the phone. The girl, she was black. I think she just didn't, you know, like me and put me in a position, mm. you know. And so when you got home, the cops were there? I'm sorry? When, when you arrived home, what happened? When I arrived home, nothing at first had happened. Mm -hmm. um, no one really told me anything was wrong. I found out when the person, when the lady had called me and came by, said she wanted to see me about my kids. And I was like, what's going on? And she was like, well, we found her out sitting outside of, on, your, on the doorstep, you know, and wasn't with anyone or whatever. I said, well, she lives right across the street from the school, and the neighbor, she must not have yeah. got my message because she normally goes up there and continue to play with the kids until I get there. Okay. Because, we know. got to run, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, these some of these horror stories on how they overreact on small cases and, uh, right. I guess, underreact on others. I mean, it's, right. it's unbelievable. I'm sorry, but, yeah, they actually they took them from me. Um, the day before my birthday, they got taken into um, the, one of the kids' grandmother's custody, which later, I have two of them, so later she took one and put her in a foster care. She went through a lot mentally. They gave her some type of Redolin-type drug oh. for letting me know, you know, and things like that. I, mm. I need to speak with the lawyer, actually, yeah. to see what's 
what I what can be done for what I've gone through. Yeah, and, and you know, if people start fighting back and mm -hmm. uh, taking these people to court on some of these cases, they'll stop doing it. Right. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. They'll pay more attention to right. how they separate families and to be a little more careful. I think we got time for one more quick call. Veronica, go ahead. How are you? Good morning. Morning. I would like to say um, that I'm proud of the young lady for coming forth. Um, you got to turn your TV down. Turn the TV down. Uh, my question is, she said she's having trouble with her daughters. They're reacting. They're nervous. Has anyone offered any counseling for the children? Um, my mom has mentioned that to me. That's something that I still need to check into. Um, right now, my timing is kind of bad because I have to work. And then they're in the after school program. It's like when we come home, it's so late in the day. There's really, right as of right now, there's just not enough time. But I'm going to look into that, though. Because sometimes they won't express their nervous yeah. about you. They may think that. Right. You may overreact to what they've gone through, and be someone that's not as close, they can open up to them and tell them what actually happened, because right. that also needs to be addressed. That's a good yeah. idea. That's a good question, good idea, and she probably does need to look into that. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for your call, Veronica. Thank you. All right, uh, that's you need to look into yeah. that. Uh, that's going to just about wrap it up, but uh, good luck to you, Andrea, thanks. and hope things work out with you and your lawyer, your new lawyer, uh, uh, Art Harmon. And uh, we'll let us know what takes place, okay? okay. Keep us Thanks. informed. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back and wrap things up with the talk of the town right here on Lincoln Way Live. We'll be right back after these messages right here on It's 38. We'll be back in a moment. And we're back live. Lincoln, we're live is the program to wrap things up today. Coming up at noon right here on It's 38, The Chill Factor, starring Laura McKenzie and Patrick McEnany. And then if you want to see a rebroadcast of this show, if you just love this show so much, you have to see it again, 8 o'clock tonight on Channel 25. Then after the show tonight at 8, at 9 o'clock, Classic Soul Train. And boy, I love watching Classic Soul Train. You see those old dances the big afros, Don Cornelius and all that. And uh, Leon Haywood is the guest on Classic Soul Train at 9 o'clock tonight on Channel 25. Monday through Friday, 10 to 1, 12.30 the buzz. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you check me out Monday through Friday on WDBZ, the buzz of Cincinnati. I'll be back next Sunday morning. See you then.